Let's talk about the slightly controversial topic of antimicrobial prophylaxis for infective endocarditis. What's up guys, welcome back to Patho and Chill. Like I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about antimicrobial prophylaxis for infective endocarditis. And so to start off, why is this antimicrobial prophylaxis even used for infective endocarditis? And it's basically to prevent a possible infection. Well, what? how can the infection even occur? Well, during dental procedures, so yes, I'm gonna be basing it on dental procedures. Um, during dental procedures, bacteremia, bacteremia is induced. And so the thing is that it is induced for a very short duration. And the problem here is that it could potentially, you know, once the bacteria gets into the bloodstream, it could potentially travel all the way down to the heart and thus cause an infection. And so this is because the oral, your oral cavity is filled with the normal flora, right? It's filled with a bunch of bacteria, probably over like 600 species of bacteria. And so this bacteria is prone to getting into the bloodstream. So is it actually effective? Is the antimicrobial prophylaxis actually effective? And the answer is that the data does not actually support it. And so now what actually induces bacteremia? Well, dental procedures actually only make up such a small percentage of the bacteremia induced with procedures such as root scaling or planing and extractions. However, the thing is that so many other um, normal activities can, in can induce bacteremia, even like mastication. So just whenever you're eating, you can potentially induce bacteremia. So that is where there's a little bit of controversy because a dental procedure is actually only inducing such a small percentage of the big picture of a potential induced bacteremia. And so basically the focus on the antimicrobial prophylaxis is essentially unfounded and focus on the dental health should always be placed. So one should never stop giving the dental treatment to a patient just because they are afraid and getting potential infective endocarditis. Okay, so now the question is, is anyone that gets bacteremia, are they gonna get infective endocarditis? And the answer is no. So it heavily relies on the patient's immune system, right? So if they have a weakened immune system, then that is they're more likely to, or they're less likely to be able to fight off this uh, pathogen or you know bacteria that has gone in their bloodstream and then near the heart. So not only does the immune status count, but also the cardiovascular health of the patient. So depending if they have various congenital diseases, um, chronic valve diseases, so all those type of diseases play a, play a role into the susceptibility for getting infective endocarditis. Um, additionally, the extent of insult, so how big like the laceration is uh, and how much bacteria actually gets into the bloodstream. And so not only how much of the bacteria, but which type of bacteria. So there is one specific bacteria that is very much known for causing infective endocarditis, and that is a Streptococcus viridens um, species. And so now let's say that your patient actually got you know bacteria into their bloodstream and it led all the way to the heart. So will you know as a dentist right there on the spot? And the answer is absolutely not. So from the moment that the bacteria gets into the bloodstream and travels you know, throughout the body and potentially reaches the heart, it'll about two to four weeks will go by before there's even a potential sign of infective endocarditis and symptoms. However, there's been many studies done before in which they get a group of patients that, and they actually do the antimicrobial prophylaxis and then another group of patients without it and then kind of uh, assess the amount of patients that got actual infective endocarditis versus the ones that didn't get the, you know, antimicrobial prophylaxis. And so the results show that there's actually more of a likelihood of getting a drug allergy to the antimicrobial prophylaxis than there is of getting infective endocarditis, which even increases the controversy as to whether this should be happening or not. So with all this talk of the antimicrobial prophylaxis, well, when is it indicated? And so according to the AHA guidelines, one should only give this antimicrobial prophylaxis when the patient has had a prosthetic cardiac valve repair or there's prosthetic material anywhere near where the heart was repaired. Um, secondly, if the patient has had a previous occurrence of infective endocarditis, then they're always indicated to get this antimicrobial prophylaxis. Um, number three is if they have a congenital heart disease, but not just any type of congenital heart disease. So they have to get, they have to have an unrepaired cyanotic congenital heart disease or one that, or one that was repaired, but it's still six months since it was repaired. Um, and they contain a prosthetic material as well. And finally, uh, within that congenital heart disease guideline is if they have residual defect 
after the repair, meaning you know the, the repair didn't fully work. So then you would give them the antimicrobial prophylaxis. And then lastly, number four, the fourth guideline of this is if the patient has had a heart transplant and that transplant late led to a um, heart valve defect. So with that, that is would be the fourth reason that you would actually give the patient um, an antimicrobial prophylaxis. And so let's just say your patient came in for a regular operative procedure, would you give antimicrobial prophylaxis? Well, the answer is probably no. So there's only a few types of dental treatments and procedures that actually require this antimicrobial prophylaxis. Um, anything that involves the gin manipulation of the gingiva, so you're gonna be getting into the gums, um, any laceration of the oral mucosa, so I guess any type of uh, extractions and, and uh, oral surgeries, and lastly, any type of endodontic treatment, such as like root canals, that basically get into the periapical region of a tooth, which is getting very near where the um, blood vessels are, and thus why bacteria could easily get into the circulation. So now, what exactly is given as the antimicrobial agent? And the answer is two grams of amoxicillin, about 30 minutes to an hour prior to the procedure. And if the patient somehow happens to be either allergic to amoxicillin because of a penicillin allergy, or they are already taking amoxicillin, then what you would do is give them clindamycin and problem solved. So in summary, the risk of infective endocarditis by dental treatment is not actually increased. However, um, dentists continue to do it due to the liability and potential anxiety and usually patient resistance with them only agreeing to get treated if they receive this prophylaxis, just in case. Um, anyways, guys, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you drop a like down below, uh, hit the subscribe button, go check out my other videos. And as always, I hope you're having a very chill day and I will see you later. Peace out.